helping Kale build a tool chest. Shocking, right? A tool chest, me. Anyway, uh, so instead of paying attention and learning, she's filming this instead. We're going to talk about dados here. I've laid out a dado 10 inches up from the bottom. This is the bottom edge of the dado. And I'm going to cut it out using my back saw. You can use a full-size hand saw to do this too. I just like to use a back saw because it keeps me in the cut a little more easily. And I haven't had enough coffee to use a full-size saw with no back aiding it. So I'm going to start at the far end and using my finger here, I'm just going to sort of guide the tip of the saw and I'm going to nibble and blow so many jokes that I'm not saying my way down the line here. I'm going kind of slowly so that I can talk while doing it. Um, and then as, as soon as I get a deep enough curve up at that end, I can saw all the way across and drop down to my baseline, which of course I forgot to mark, as anyone who's ever taken a class with me knows I often do. So I'm just going to get this started. There we go. So now I'm going to stop sawing, mark that baseline, and then I'll saw down to the bottom, and then we'll come back and do the other half, and I'll show you how I bash it out. I've got my baselines marked now, and I'm trying to keep the saw even as I come across. Uh, you might be wondering why I don't have it clamped down. It is because clamps take too long. So I have a board up against these dogs here, and that's just to get it out at the edge so that I can saw more comfortably and accurately, and also so that it's easier to get in there with a chisel, which we'll be doing in a minute. So I'll saw down to my baseline, and then we'll saw the second half. Check out your baseline on both sides, because I have a tendency, as do most people, to push down like this when you're sawing, instead of keeping it dead level. So I probably hit my baseline over here, and I have, before I hit it over there. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I've got another couple of strokes to go. So what that tells me is that I also haven't hit the baseline in the middle. So now I will just lift it up a little bit and make the cuts down there. Probably good now. So now that I'm down to the baseline that I finally remembered to mark, I'm going to take the shelf itself and hold it up to the far side, this side of my kerf. In other words, I'm going to get as close as I can without going over so that I can get the tightest fit possible on this shelf when it goes in. So I'll just hold it in place. I'll make a tick mark out at either end. Why am I not marking all the way across? Well, if this board is at all cupped, a nice tight dado can pull that cup out, but I didn't want a big uh, arc here in the middle, so I would rather mark at each end and then just pull the line across. Hopefully they match perfectly. Oh good, they do. Now I'm just gonna saw the other half, just like we did the first one, and then we'll come back with a chisel and my favorite tool, the router plane, to remove the waste. So I grabbed two chisels because I don't know which one's gonna fit. I'm gonna use a chisel, the widest one possible, to bash out most of the waste. I think I can get this three-quarter one in there, but I have a, a slightly smaller one. I'm guessing it's a half inch. I don't know. I just grabbed uh, if it doesn't fit. But before I use the chisel to bash out most of the waste, I'm going to set my router plane because that's what we'll finish the cut with. So first I'm going to set the blade of my router plane to the baseline that I marked earlier. I'll turn it up on edge here so we can see what we're doing. I usually do this on the front, obviously, where I can see it better, but I'm just trying to show it to the camera. So if it looks awkward, it's because it is. All right, so I've got the depth, uh, the depth set for the blade. I'm going to lock it down here, and then I'm going to lock it down here with what we like to call the depth suggester. And I am going to use a screwdriver to snug it down in hopes that it won't move. I could just use the router plane to take out all of the waste and get down to my final depth. But if I do that, I'm using the router plane a lot. And the router plane is slightly more difficult, not really difficult, but more of a pain in the back, uh, backside to sharpen than a chisel. 
I tend to choose the tool that takes the least amount of bother to sharpen. It's why I use a coping saw when I'm cutting dovetails because a coping saw blade's a lot easier, easier to sharpen than a chisel. I just replace it. Same thing goes here when deciding between the chisel and the router plane. So we'll start with our chisel to take out most of the waste. And I'm just going to align it pretty close to the bottom of the baseline here. Now I will start just bashing it out with my chisel flat or close to flat. And I'll go as deep as I can. And now you know why I wanted this out at the edge of the bench. Even if I could reach all the way across to bash it out, I don't want to because I don't want to blow out the backside. So now I'm about halfway through and I'm going to turn the board around and come back the other way. Don't be shy. Get close to that baseline. The less work we have to do with the router plane, the better, although it is a lot of fun to use. And it's also actually okay if you go a little deep in the middle. It won't hurt things because this particular project, in this particular project, the board will get glued and nailed in place. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so with that finished, we're going to come back with the router plane. But before we do that, I want to make sure I brush away any of the, detri any of the detritus from what we've already done. Because if it gets caught under here, it's going to scar up the side of the piece. So let's give it a go. Just like with the chisel, I don't want to work all the way across from one side. If I were to push all the way through, this could tear out here. Again, probably wouldn't show, but that would be embarrassing. We wouldn't want to do that. So we can just push forward. I'm going to come back and just turn the blade a little to uh, come down the sides here. And this is exactly why I don't like to clamp because I can pick it up quickly and turn it around and finish the job. We're pretty much done. You can see here in the middle, it's nice and smooth. I went a little bit below the baseline when I was knocking it out with the chisel here. That's why we have that little dip there, but it really doesn't matter. It, this is a uh, perfectly acceptable work. Well, it will be if we find out uh, whether or not the shelf fits, but I'm not going to show that on camera because I'm not an idiot. Kale said I should show it. We'll see. All right, we'll give it a go. I actually don't know what the front and the back of this is. We don't have a marriage mark on it yet. So I'm going to choose for you, Kale, if that's all right. That's all right. I got a thumbs up. Okay, so I'm going to draw my marriage mark on the front. Uh, this is the top. That is not the front. This is the front. That means this goes together this way. Okay. So we're going to drop it in. And it is a little cupped, actually. So I can pull it out and push it down. It's a little bit tight at this end. It's a teensy bit loose over here. But I'll take that. Mm. 